yeah, a lot has changed since my days at UT. Um, first of all, got married. I have, a, I have a four month old boy now, which is unbelievable. Played four years in Arizona and I loved it. I mean, I absolutely loved it. Got drafted in the fourth round. And then now, as of a few weeks ago, I'm a Chicago Bear. So a lot has changed, but it's all changed for the better. My time at Texas was similar to my time and my journey into the NFL. Once again, I don't like using the word underdog, but not a highly touted recruit, if you will. I wasn't a five-star recruit, wasn't a four-star recruit. I was a three-star recruit out of a really small school in Dallas, Texas. That's the throw, now under pressure, wrapped up, and down he goes. Great move inside by Sam Ocho, the freshman, seeing his first action. It was a similar kind of journey, that freshman year, just trying to compete and trying to find a way to get better. And there were days, many days, my freshman year, even sophomore year, where I questioned if I was good enough to even play in college. I said, I'm, I don't think I'm good enough to, to do it. Because I'm, go I mean, I'm going against guys like Jamal Charles. And I'm, this guy runs a, a four zero. I mean, this guy's unbelievable. It just didn't make sense. Jermichael Finley, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to defend Jermichael Finley. It just didn't make sense. And so that was as a freshman, as a sophomore. Finally, as time went on, I saw Rag do it. I saw Henry do it. I saw Lamar do it. And then I knew it was my time to do it. So finally, my, my junior year, it was finally my time to shine and follow in the footsteps of those Texas greats. And so now it was my turn. I remember walking in the, in the Coach Giles office. I said, well, Coach, what, what more do I need to do? Because I feel like I've been doing a solid job, but what more can I do? And he's like, well, you're, you're making good plays and you're, you're doing great stuff, but you really gotta, you, know, you, gotta, you gotta make some plays that can just electrify the whole stadium to electrify the whole stadium. And I never thought about it that way because he talked about Sergio. Sergio made plays that just made the stadium erupt. Shotgun snap to Taylor Potts. Here comes Kimba. He's got it. He said, you, you got to be that guy. Make plays that just make, make the stadium just blow up. And so that was another moment where I realized that it's more than just showing up and, and saying, yeah, I'm a Longhorn, hook him. It's about going out there and, and, and making plays out there and making a name for yourself. That's what it's all about. Curtis Samuels pulls it in zone read and he is slammed to the turn. The Longhorn on my chest, it just gives me a sense of pride. It's a sense of pride. It's a sense of, of belonging, a sense of fellowship. So I walk into the NFL and on my Arizona Cardinals team, I'm playing with Lyle Fenline. And I hadn't met Lyle. He graduated a year or two before I even entered into college. Yet we had an instant friendship, an instant bond. And it got to a point where I'm, now I'm playing against guys who I, who I came in with. I'm playing against Earl Thomas, who's now probably the number one safety in the NFL. After every game, you're seeing two, three, four other guys who played at Texas either with you or before you, and you're shaking a hand, you're laughing, you're joking after you battle with them on the field. It brings a sense of pride, a sense of tradition, and just a sense of, of fellowship that you have, and it transcends all boundaries. Not only do I feel like a veteran, I actually am a veteran. Even in my new locker room with the Bears, I talked to a lot of the different guys, and I asked, how many years have you played in the league? And they're all like, my first year, second year. I'm like, this is five for me. And I, I'm one of the older guys on the team, and it's not what everyone thinks. I remember being in a sophomore or junior and talking to some of the older guys who had played in the league, and they'd come back and they'd mentor us. And we'd always ask, what is it like? And they'd always say, man, your days at Texas are the last time you really played football. It never really made sense. And you know, I asked them to expand a little more, and they said, well, it's because the NFL is a business. You got guys who are there to take care of their families. Guys are there, they're trying to make the team, they're trying to beat you out. And I experienced that a little bit my rookie year, and I was trying to fight for a spot. I was determined I, I was going to get on the field one way or another. Well, since I wasn't playing, I, I decided to make practices my games. My goal was, once again, like dog eat dog. I was going out there to embarrass every single offensive lineman out there. And, and that's what I did. And next thing you know, uh, Saturday night before our game on Sunday, I get a call from the coach. He tells me I'm starting. I was floored. I had no idea. I was starting against the Baltimore Ravens where we played Ricky Williams, who I had watched, who I had grown up to. I mean, that's why a lot of players go to Texas because of guys like Ricky Williams. And I get a sack on Joe Flacco. And the week before, as a backup, I had got a sack on Ben Roethlisberger with the Steelers. The next week, I start again against St. Louis and get two sacks on Sam Bradford. 
And so anyways, it just kept on rolling and rolling until finally my, my rookie year, I get seven sacks as a rookie, only starting nine games. And it was just, that was my journey. That was my journey into the NFL. Having a family is a game changer. Having a wife, getting married, having a wife is a game changer. Uh, and then having a, having a child, having a son is a game changer. I remember getting married uh, was number one, the best day of my life, but it was a game changer. I, I, was, I had a, a bigger sense of responsibility. I knew that there was more than just me I had to take care of. Now when I'm on the field, I'm not thinking about what I can do for me. I'm thinking about what I can do for my family, my wife and my son. And I remember we, uh, December 19th, uh, so right before the Seahawks game, December 19, 2014, Caleb was born. My son Caleb was born. And funny enough, I actually didn't play a lot that game. But in all reality, it, for the first time in a long time, it didn't really matter. Like football at that moment didn't matter. Starting didn't matter. Winning or losing that game didn't matter. We ended up losing that game by a couple touchdowns. And as crazy as it sounds, it really didn't matter because I knew I was going home to my two-day-old son. And I remember being at the team hotel, going to sleep, closing my eyes. And as soon as I closed my eyes, I could see was just this huge, just this portrait, this picture of his face. That's all I could see. It was just, and it was, it was just the most beautiful thing. And I remember at that moment things changed. So the next game, the last game of the season, I hadn't had a sack all season and get, get my first sack of that season on, on Cap, on Colin Kaepernick. It was almost just a newfound, new lit fire that was in me. And so now at this point, I'm playing for a whole lot more than I ever have before. That change we talked about from high school to college, that change from college to the NFL, that change from one team to another. I've been in Arizona my entire career. And now I'm a, a seasoned vet and in a new city, a new town. Uh, but I'm excited, I'm really excited. I mean, it's, it's funny, people don't think about, about the little things, right? Like finding a place restaurants, looking for different grocery stores, like where do we shop? These little things you don't think about when you're making a move. So all that's new, all that's different, but that even just shows why it's so much so much more important to have that support system with my wife and Ghazi and my son Caleb. It, nothing else matters.